Jeremy, a big technology that's been emerging in recent years is Docker. So in Genesis 3, we now support Docker containers. Could you explain kind of what this is about versus running, let's say, a VM or something, and why is it cool to have that in Genesis 3? So first, um, Docker containers are much more lightweight than yep. VMs. Yep. So you can add lots of Docker containers to your Gen3 projects. Yeah. And uh, it's also um, much faster. Yep. And what I really like about it, I'll say this, is when you drag a Docker container into your workspace, it connects the automatically to the internet and yes, basically Gen3 installs Yes, will, will pull the Docker image from the internet and install it for you. Yep. And it's uh, when you so you when you drag and drop the Docker container into your project, uh, it will work. Like you don't have to install anything, configure anything. It just you just start the Docker container. It usually boots up in just a few seconds, and uh, it's ready to use. Now, 2.2, great new feature. I've heard a lot of complaints about this. Big issue with Docker containers. You turn it off, you shut down GNS3. You open it up again, everything that you've installed is gone. Yes, it's not uh, persistent. Persistency. So now we have persistency in in GNS3 persistent, if I can spell that. Persistent, yeah? Persistent. I think you missed it. T. <laughs> Can't spell today. So we have persistent containers, sorry, persistency of Docker containers in GNS3 2.2. Yes. I'll add a, an, a, another video. Um, either below, I'll link it below this, or it'll be further in the course, depending where you're watching this, uh, showing you how to make Docker containers persistent. I think that's a huge advantage because I, I had a lot of complaints on my Python courses where we used an Ubuntu Docker container, and then they would install Python, and when they come back tomorrow... Yes, start the, the node, start the node again, and oh, where is my Python program? But now you, you by simply, it's a simple edit. You just add like the, the folders that you want to keep yes. persistent and then it, it remains. Yeah, it remains. Yeah. So what's the advantage of using a VM over a Docker? Would you recommend Docker always? Uh, if you just need a few t tools, like to have a Linux uh, shell with some tools like ping, trace route, etc. cetera, uh, I will go with the Docker. Uh, and uh, if you want like a uh, Windows, uh, Windows system or any other advanced system, you just run it in a, in a VM. Yes, yeah, so if you want a full operating system, yeah. if you want the GUI. Like the GUI, yes, like you run it in a, in a VM. So yeah, you don't get a Docker Windows No, no, container, there's no Docker Windows But you container. get a Linux Docker yeah, container. Yes. I mean, Docker's more for Linux these days any, yeah. anyway. So if you want like a simple console, no, G, no GUI, mm -hmm. and you want to run Python yeah. scripts, then this is the way to go. Yeah, that's a way to go. Docker is much more lightweight. But if you want to run a, write a Python application with a fancy graphical user interface, then you get yeah, the VM. Use the VM, yeah. The problem with the VM is it's very resource intensive. Yeah, so you cannot like have uh, Android on a VM in your Gen3 project on your, on your computer. But you could with this. You could with Docker, yes. It's very lightweight. Yeah. Great. Any other Comments about Docker and VMs? Mm, no, 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 so everything. That's brilliant. Jeremy, so let me ask you this question. If I wanted to host a Windows VM or something as part of my Gen3 topology, how would I do that? Uh, you can either use VMware or VirtualBox. Yeah. So you've got two options, yeah? Yes, you create your a v a new VM in VMware, you install Windows uh, in it, within it, and then you can import that VM in, uh, in Gen3, in your Gen3 project, and use it uh, like any other node. So what's the advantage of one of these? I mean, I suppose the one thing I can think of, if you're running GNS, the Gen3 VM in VMware, mm -hmm. you can't start up a whole bunch of VirtualBox VMs because it'll crash the CPU or something, is that right? Uh, yes, there's a, there's a conflict between uh, VMware and VirtualBox. Um, it's like we around nested virtualization support. You, you cannot activate 
nested virtualization support from both product at the same time. Yeah, so in other words, so this is something that I've come across. You know, I'm running on a Mac mm -hmm. with Genesis on a Mac, and I'm using VMware Fusion. So I have to do my Windows VMs mm -hmm. in VMware Fusion. Yes. Because otherwise it's going to crash. Yeah. So if oh, you're running yeah. a Genesis VM in VMware, you have to use VMware uh, VMs. Mm -hmm. If you're using VirtualBox, then you'd use VirtualBox VM. Yes, usually it's a good idea to, to be consistent. Yeah. So if, you have, if you're using VirtualBox VMs in your projects uh, and you're run, running the Genesis VM uh, in VirtualBox, uh, it's, it's the best to, to use both products. Turn it around. Sorry, we've got a, another member of the um, team giving us a hard time here. <laughs> Mark Blackwell himself. Can you just flip that back, Mark, so we can see ourselves? <laughs> okay, so VMware, if you be consistent with VMware, yes. VirtualBox, be consistent. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you run the Gen3 VM with VMware, please use uh, Gen3 VMs in your projects. And the same applies to VirtualBox. Okay, now what about this? Because I know you can run Windows VMs on QMU. Uh, you can, but it's going to be extremely slow. Uh, the experience is not going to be great. Uh, so that's why we recommend VMware or VirtualBox. Okay, so this option is basically where you've got the Genesis 3 VM, and then you're running QMU in Genesis 3. So it's actually QMU on Linux. Yes. And then you're running Windows inside QMU, inside Linux within the Genesis 3 VM, running within a virtualization technology like VMware. Yeah. So you're nesting, 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 yes, nesting. Yes, and yeah, it's going to be slow. very slow, yes. So th then you would recommend these two options. Yeah, VMware or VirtualBox for your Windows host or Mac OS host. Or yeah, I mean, and that's been my experience. I did Kali Linux and tried to do it this way, even with this, just Linux. Yeah. And it's a bit slow. It's, it seems to be easier sometimes f if you've got big devices or devices that are going to be process intensive to use it this way. Yeah. That's great. I mean, would you recommend one over the other or is it just depending what you're using uh, the VM with? I usually prefer to use VMware because they have a better product. Yeah. Uh, I think they, it's, uh, they are slightly faster than VirtualBox. But VirtualBox will be totally fine to, to use and it's free. That's, uh, that's one of the big advantage. Yeah. That's great. So, Jeremy, thanks very much for sharing about the different appliances. If I've missed any or if there's any that you have questions about, let me know, and I'll create some videos about that. Jeremy, thanks very much. You're welcome.